If you're searching your RTU options because you need to remotely monitor your microwave sites or power substations, or maybe even just a simple server closet, one of the biggest questions on your mind has to be, how much does an RTU cost? What kind of a price are we talking about? Because I've got to figure out what kind of budget I need to allow for. So let's look at the price range of RTUs, and it is huge, and then specific factors that will affect where an RTU will fall within that range. And then finally, we'll look at specific price tiers so you can understand for a certain amount of money what you might expect to be able to buy. So to start us off, the R2 price range is massive. You might have an ultra budget model that is not the last word in reliability, but essentially could be called an RTU without being dishonest for about $200. Something that's bomb proof with a proven design and a lot of functions might be thousands. Let's break down some of those factors now. Features are probably the number one thing that affects price no matter what you're researching. And RTUs just aren't any different. If it generates a lot of value for you, it could be worth the price. But if it doesn't, then no one would buy it, so it just couldn't be priced there. So feature-wise, first thing, inputs and outputs, I.O. On an RTU, it's three major types. Discrete inputs, analog inputs, and control relay outputs. So if you need two discretes or four discretes or eight discretes to monitor doors and sensors and equipment alarms, then that's a fairly small RTU. But if you need 32 or 64, we're talking about a larger, more expensive RTU. For analogs, do you need any at all? And if you do, do you need one or two or eight or 16? Same thing for control relays. How many of those do you need? That combination of how many you need in each of those three categories is probably one of the biggest factors that will affect your RTU price. Next, we come to transport. Is all you need simple LAN? And if so, that's probably available on even the cheapest RTU. But do you need a cell modem or some kind of legacy transport or a satellite uplink? All of these things will cost more. Then there are value adds. Voltage conversion is one where you might have a negative 48 volt site and a negative 48 volt RTU, but you have a plus 12 volt sensor. And some RTUs will do some voltage conversion internally and give you a power output so you can power that sensor. Some will also include an IP switch. So you can have a four port switch or a seven port switch. So you can give LAN to other devices out of the site with a RTU that theoretically is reliable and has a good protected design. So you don't have to put another less reliable switch out at the site. Then we come to protocols. Is this an RTU that supports a nice industry standard or is it something that you, the manufacturer is trying to trap you. They, they have their own proprietary protocol and maybe they're trying to sell a certain part of the solution, maybe the RTU, at a lower price because they know that then they've trapped you and you have to buy their overpriced, underpowered master station to go along with it. So really with protocols, there's a lot of reasons to do it, but ultimately to free up your purchasing options for the future, look for SNMP or DNP or Modbus, an open standard protocol like that. Then we get to built-in intelligence. A basic RTU is just gonna do the very basics. It's gonna tell you, yes, the alarm point three is active, but it's not going to do things like filter alarms based on how long they've been standing. So you might say, well, I don't care that the door opened, but I wanna know that it's been propped open for 30 seconds. That kind of a qualification timer is a function that you find on a more advanced and therefore more expensive RTU. You might also see derived alarm logic where you could say, I don't really care about this alarm or this alarm terribly much, but I really want to know if they both happen together. That kind of logic comes in when you have a more advanced RTU. And then finally, specialty form factors. Typical RTUs are 19 inch or 23 inch rack mount. Some are wall mount, but it is possible to get remotes if you pay a little extra that are fully designed to mate with a particular product or to mount in a unique configuration at the top of a certain kind of rack. And you might pay a little more for that, but the value there can be tremendous. So don't discount that. One example from the DPS catalog involves a particular radio that was not SNMP capable. This is a legacy device. And there was a remote developed that could attach to it. And all the ports were in exactly the right place. There was even a screw that engaged with a particular screw hole on the back of the radio. It was just a perfect fit. So you might expect to pay a little more for something like that, but ultimately it's gonna be worthwhile because it was such a, a perfect fit solution. So moving beyond features, we get to build quality and location. Obviously, if you're buying a very cheap RTU, the internal components are probably one of the best ways for the manufacturer to save on parts that they have to put into each and every model they build. 
Also location. Is this thing assembled in the United States or in Canada or is it overseas somewhere? That those things just have a huge impact on cost that the manufacturer faces and therefore the price that they're able to charge. Included services. These are not so much about the RTU itself, but rather the total cost of ownership. What kinds of things might you have to pay for later because they're not bundled in with the initial purchase? So first of all, before you even buy, does the sales department give you a technical consultation? Can you say, this is what I'm trying to accomplish. Can you help me out? What's the good RTU that's going to match my requirements? And then they draw you a diagram and explain things very clearly. Or are they just in the business of throwing a catalog at you and saying, good luck? Now, after you buy, can you get free tech support and free training, or are you paying some obscene hourly rate to get it? Is there any ability to customize? A manufacturer that has uh, charging a reasonable price, not a, not a bare bones manufacturer, they will have some ability because they control their process to make changes, either to the firmware or maybe even the hardware for you, and that can really help you get a perfect fit solution for a particular need. If you can get firmware updates for your RTU, First of all, can you get them at all? But if you can, are they free? Do you have to pay for them? These are things that you might not consider in the initial purchase, but you really should, because down the line, when you want that new feature that's been developed, are you going to have to pay for that? And then finally, compliance testing. A manufacturer that's charging a little bit more probably has some more resources to devote to in-house testing, whether it's in an EMI chamber or a hot and cold chamber, and they can be able, they can certify against a particular requirement that you might have. You have to say, I have to satisfy this governmental regulation. And they send you, you send them the spec and they're able to say, yes, we tested it and it does satisfy that requirement. And then finally you get to distribution channel. And this one's perhaps underappreciated where if you are buying a remote that comes from a manufacturer and goes through a, a large regional distributor to a more local distributor and then to you, each stage along the chain people had to take out a little bit of profit in order to stay in business. If you can collapse that channel down and find a, a manufacturer where you can buy direct, that can be a way to actually create some savings because you don't have all those middlemen in the way. Now let's take a look at the cheapest possible RTU. This is the bottom end of our price range, about $200. Some of them are more like 300, but there, I've seen some 195, you'll see a price out there. These Technically speaking, could be considered RTUs, and they could be right for the right scenario. If you're a hobbyist, say, or you have just a server room where you're not monitoring at all, I mean, this has got to be better than nothing, but you just need to watch for, there's a lot of reliability concerns here, and it's certainly not going to be the most fully featured RTU. But let's walk through some of the common factors. We are going to be talking about small inputs and outputs, maybe two discretes, four discretes, maybe eight. If any analogs, probably just one or two if any relays, which is one or two. The built-in intelligence is gonna be quite limited. You can certainly see oh, these alarms are set and these alarms are clear, but you probably are, don't have much in the way of programming your own simple logic equations or setting delays that help you filter out nuisance alarms. It's just gonna do the basic job of remote monitoring, but not much else. Conveniently, technology has come to a point where even the cheapest R2 probably has a web interface at this point. But protocol support's a bit of a question. Is it gonna support the protocol you need? So make sure you check that out. Can it send email alerts? Those can be very convenient, especially if you have just a few RTUs that you're deploying, then they can send emails directly. You don't have to worry about a central master station. It is a guarantee at this level that you're gonna get low grade circuit components. There's just no way. The components alone would cost more than $200 if they were high grade. So that is a guarantee. Also, this thing is not gonna be manufactured in the US or Canada. It's just, there's no way that the labor costs could be covered by such an inexpensive price. You also won't be getting tech support or training, and it's possible you might get it, but you're gonna pay for it, and it might cost almost as much as the RTU itself every hour you need support. So you really need to rope that into your purchase price when you're looking at something that's inexpensive. There is not gonna be customization. It's gonna be off the shelf, and if it meets your needs, great, but if it doesn't, you'll need to look for another option because there just isn't an ability to make adjustments. And then finally, you're not gonna have a guaranteed future availability. A company that's making remotes like this is doing it at razor thin margins probably, making a, a huge number of them and trying to sell them across the board. They really, there's not much reason for them to say, we are going to guarantee that for the foreseeable future or for some specific number of years, this thing is gonna be available if you need more. They're gonna update their design if they need to. They might have to make an adjustment to deal with rising costs in one part of the design. 
something's going to change and it's likely the design will change. So when you come back a couple years from now, you may not be able to get the same model again. So now if we step it up, if we say, well, all right, we want to stay pretty cheap, but what can we do if we add in a little more money here? If we step up to the next part of the range, somewhere around $700, you get to what I call the cheapest full service RTU. Here we're still talking about small IO counts. We're not talking about some massive RTU. You might have eight discrete, couple contact, a couple relays, a couple analogs, but it's not massive yet. But the gains have been in the functionality and the quality. So you're going to have some built-in intelligence like qualification timers or alarm processing logic. You'll have a web interface, of course. You should have some kind of open protocol support at this level, SNMP, DNP, Modbus. You should definitely have email alerts, and you should be able to send those emails to your wireless provider's gateway to convert them to SMS so you can get either email or SMS text message to your phone. You'll want to make sure that any manufacturer you choose, once you hit this price level, they'd better be using quality circuit components. There's just no reason at this level why they can't justify it, and you should be able to get a reliable RTU that's going to have a wide temperature tolerance and is just generally reliable and won't break down. You'll also find that about this price level made in the USA starts to become possible. You can find remotes that aren't manufactured overseas and that can create quality gains and also opportunities for customization. Free tech support and training this is something you should demand once you've gotten to this level. It's just, it's possible, so go with a manufacturer that gives it to you. You shouldn't be paying extra after you've already paid this much money for the remote. You should get some amount of tech support and training built in to the purchase price. You also want to make sure you have guaranteed future availability at a price like this. If a manufacturer is charging this price, they should be able to say, yes, this, is de this design will be available for a certain number of years, but you can start to standardize on this because it's not going anywhere. If someone's charging this much and can't give you that kind of a guarantee, you probably want to look elsewhere. Now, if we just step up the capacity, everything else on this page remained exactly the same, but we'll go to a medium full service RTU. And that might step you up into about the $1,100 range, and all I changed, I bolded it for you there, medium input and output counts. We're talking about maybe 16 discretes, maybe four, maybe eight analogs, four to eight control relays. It's a medium sized RTU, but everything else I talked about from the small full service RTU is still here. It's still made with quality components. It can be made in the USA. You should get built in tech support and training included for free. Uh, it should be an intelligent RTU. So everything else is the same, but we've just stepped up the capacity and the price goes up a bit. Now let's take a big leap toward the middle of our price range. About $2,500, you might have something like a purpose-built RTU. This is where you could have a fully customized transport and protocol exactly the way you need it. The mounting and the form factor could be designed in a way that either mates with an existing product you have or sits in a, a unique scenario or a unique cabinet that you need. All kinds of customization becomes possible around here, this price range. You might have legacy mediation, so the RTU can actually process legacy protocols on site, convert them to something like SNMP, and then send them back to your central manager. And you also get the ability for high input and output counts up around this range. You might have 32 or 64 discrete inputs. You could have 8 or even 16 analogs, 8 or even 16 control relays. And of course, this device would be quality. It had to be because in order to get customization, you have to have a manufacturer who has control over their whole process. So if you're getting something that's customized, quality is almost built in. Just make sure you're not dealing with somebody who deals in prototypes. You want somebody who's been doing customization for a while so that they have a, a strong collection of design elements so that they're not inventing everything from scratch. They're just assembling a new design for you that has maybe one new thing and a unique arrangement of some things that have been proven in many other designs in the past. And now to finish us off to top out the range, full legacy and modern RTU. This is an RTU that has legacy capability so it can deal with legacy transports and other legacy equipment, just the realities of any modern evolved network that has all kinds of different equipment ages in it. And it also has plenty of modern functions. So you might see multiple transports and protocols. You might have a dial modem and a serial connection and LAN, or maybe you have LAN and cellular on one box. Whatever it is you need, you can have failovers. So you can have one transport that fails over to another to another. You might have multiple different protocols, so you can send to different masters from the same remote. High IO counts are a given at this price range. 
basically the sky's the limit within reason. You might see 64, you can see 80 discretes, uh, you might see 16 analog, 16 relays, maybe even more, 32, whatever you need, you should be able to get it at a price like this. And as I say, total customization is a given. Whatever you need, it should be able to be designed and built for you. Everything else I've spoken about already is still the true. Obviously at this price, you should be expecting nothing but top quality components, excellent manufacturing, and guarantees that it's gonna be available in the future. So really to come back to our original question, how much does an RTU cost? It really, really depends. Uh, I don't want to lie to you about that. It's hard to pin it down in this kind of a, a forum. I don't want to tell you that it's going to be exactly this price. It really depends. So what I'd encourage you to do so that you can get some more information is give us a call at DPS. We can give you an exact price. Once you've told us what you're trying to accomplish, what you need an RTU to do, we can pin it down to a particular model, customize it if we have to, and quote you a price. We will always include, with any sales proposal we give you, a diagram showing what we heard you say you need and what we're proposing, and a full text explanation with a lot of technical details so you can make sure that it's the right solution for you. So if you'd like that, if you'd like that information, give us a call, 1-800-693-0351. You can also send us an email at sales at dpstele.com.